China polarizes opinions is an understatement. One of the reasons why that may be is because they can do things at scale like few others. In this video we'll talk about China's big transmission line network and how it is helping the country to usher in a carbon neutral future. Hello and welcome to the channel. A more subdued example of China's capability of building large things is the way they have built out their power transmission grid. China's high voltage transmission network is one of the largest in the world and they have invested substantial amounts to make it larger and more modern. Here's IEEE Spectrum talking about the projects. The sheer scale of the new line and the advanced grid technology that's been developed to support it dwarf anything going on in pretty much any other country. And yet, here in China, it's just one of 22 such ultra-high voltage megaprojects that grid operators have built over the past decade. These lines are expensive. In the northwestern region of Xinjiang, China recently switched on its largest UHV link, a 1,100 kV DC circuit that cost over 40.7 billion yuan. That is over $6 billion. One of the key features of these high voltage lines is that they transmit power over long distances using direct current as compared to alternating current. By using higher voltages of direct current, which flows through conductors more uniformly than does alternating current, the new transmission lines dramatically reduce the amount of power that's lost along the way. The Chinese have worked with the best in the world to achieve these feats. ABB, Siemens, and other international power technology companies have been instrumental in developing and validating key components of the Chinese UHV grid. Only a handful of companies have the know-how of designing, manufacturing equipment for and working with such high voltage levels. And these global majors are extremely protective of their intellectual property. But China's state grid insisted on sharing the intellectual property for the technologies developed at its behest. After all, the Chinese were giving them access to a humongous market. And what is the use of all these intellectual property rights if they cannot be monetized appropriately? So, the global companies initially balked, but ultimately relented because of state grid's determined attitude and the huge market opportunities of the Chinese market. Two years later, Chinese firms were manufacturing the resulting 6-inch switches. Anyway, the result of all this effort is an emerging nationwide supergrid that will interconnect China's six regional grids and rectify the huge geographic mismatch between where China produces its cleanest power, in the north and west, and where power is consumed, in the densely populated east. However, with great power comes great responsibilities of ensuring that the new long-haul DC lines don't destabilize China's regional AC grids. The ultimate solution, according to state grid engineers, is to double down on UHV. They argue that the country must move far more energy via UHV DC to maximize the use of renewable energy while slashing reliance on coal. State Grid is also building a world-leading set of ultra-high voltage AC lines, to help eastern China's regional AC grids absorb the output from those massive lines. The UHV AC power grid is like a deep water port, and the UHV DC is like a 10,000-ton ship. Only the deep water port can support the 10,000-ton ship, says Qin Xiaohui, Vice Director of Power System Planning with State Grid's China Electric Power Research Institute, in Beijing. That aggressive build-out has helped fast-growing urban centers such as Shanghai stave off power shortages. Despite delays in the expansion of China's nuclear power capacity and constraints on local coal power due to air quality concerns. The new UHV grid is also helping the country lead the global transition to renewable generation, moving 161.5 terawatt-hours of hydro, wind, and solar energy in 2017 alone. 
In a world that must decarbonize, figuring out how to balance variable energy supplies such as solar and wind generation with regional loads is a growing concern. Transmission is a very cost-efficient way of doing that, says Kalavik, general manager at ABB. In China the question is how quickly state grid will overcome the technical and political obstacles that are holding back UHV's carbon slashing potential. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give a like. Thank you.